Welcome Tango Friends. I'm Annie and I am greeting you today from Austria rather than my home studio in Colorado. I'm visiting here for several weeks. I'm visiting my dear friend Ingrid and I am in the amazing garden of my host family from so many years ago. We're in Frankenfels, which is a tiny village outside of Vienna, about an hour and a half west in the Voralpen, the foothills of the Alps. And it's a beautiful day today. I know I'm going to be here for several weeks, so I decided to bring my equipment and do some tutorials from here. I hope you continue to join me because I'm going to include some footage of the amazing sights that I'm seeing. Uh, Vienna and this, the beautiful natural surroundings and I'd love to share that inspiration with you as well. So thanks for joining me today. I will get on with our program. This is our first Centangle from Austria. So for the first tutorial here I have been inspired by so many things that are sculpted and flourished with medallions and gold and mandalas. So I'm basing my first tutorial on this tangle, which is called I Can Too. It's a lovely organic tangle by Hanni Waldburger. And I am, she's a CZT, and I'm gonna add another tangle to it, Rick's Flux, and build a little mandala, mandala with a spinning leaf or foliage and some gold. So this is what we're aiming for and we don't need a lot of materials. Today I'm just going to be using a Zendala from Zentangle and since I wanted this to go a little bit faster I have just traced a small circle that was like two and a half inches in diameter and then we will be using also a colored um, uh, graphite pencil. I have a 2B here today and always have my kneaded eraser we will be needing an O1 micron pen in black and an O5 micron pen in blue. And then I, of course, have my blending stump, my tortillon. So we will start by dividing our, our um, circle into quarters, so just with a tick, just so we know we're gonna, where we're going to be spinning with our, our tangle. And then I'd like to do a little circle here in the middle for a gem or a pearl. From which to take off and spin. And, and then I'm gonna actually go ahead and start with my ink. I'm gonna use my black 01 micron pen. I'm gonna give it a little facet. We can, we can fix that with our gold. I'm going to take off from the circle and go in this direction to this uh, point. Actually, I'm going to go halfway in between these two points. That's easier for me. So I'm going to take off and land with a little bit of an arc about like that. Then comes the I can to tangle pattern. Go down about this far and make a smaller it could even go down further. That was a little bit close. And then we're going to make a leaf shape up here. I like to just start here, form my leaf, and then a little, almost like a half circle, and another one. And then spiral that last one in, coming up to the base of that second uh, branch. And then I'll just bring this down. And then we're going to do the same thing. Oh, wait, no, we're not done yet. Although, yes, I do want to do all of my I can twos first before I do my fluxes because you'll see why. I'm going to use these kind of as a guideline and a stopping point for the flux. So I'm going to, I'm going to try to aim for this direction or this point here with my eye. I'm going to take off and land. And again, I'll go down a little further this time. So it's like that. And then this time I'm going to go finish this one first. 
think I had too much good Austrian coffee this morning. Now we're going to go one more time. I'm kind of tapering it down, but you can do your I can too, however you have learned it or however you want to stylize it. And one more time here. So we've got the start of our spinning I can twos with Rick's Flux. Now comes the Rick's Flux part. Starting at the base, let's take one that's pretty open. Starting at the base, I'm going to just do a flux. And I like to do my flux and then backstroke it with that mid rib. And this is what I meant by using this then as a stopping point or a guide. And I'm going to get bigger as we go up. And in fact, on the other one, I got really big and I went all the way to the border of my circle. And that's enough. We're going to be filling these areas in with some perfs, some orbs, and then we're just going to do that again. I'm just going to stop there. You can either like pretend it's going behind or you can go all the way up. And you can make your fluxes touch or leave a little space in between. On this last one, I do want you to note that the more negative space, the more blank area you, you leave behind there, the more space you have to add the blue color. So that's going to be a matter of your choice. One more. Oops, I just went the wrong direction. No worries. Actually, it looks like it belongs to this one. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and ink my rim of my circle. And while you're there and at it, you can add this extra or line if you want to add a gold rim. Whoops, that's a little bit wonky, but we'll clean that up with the gold pen. You can make it thicker here with the gold pen and then re retrace. You'll take your time since uh, I'm demoing. I'm not, not really being very mindful. So then at this point, we're going to have to do some little line weight where there's a crossover. That would be like a bit of a drop shadow. So I'm going to weight the line there. I'm going to weight some in here, make sure that my little curly cues or my half spirals are nice and accented. So do you see what I mean when there's a crossover? If we accent this line or restate it, it's, it's going to be easier to read. And I'm just making a little bit of 
weight line there. You can even do some here, like a little triangle at the bottom. That's going to help it have that folding effect more visibly. You could also just restate that kind of mid-rib line instead of doing these little... Yeah, you can always come back and do some more line weight if you feel like it after you're finished, when you can look at it and say, okay, this, this needs to be a little bit more prominent. But look how much nicer that is. It's called lively line in the art world. If all of your lines are exactly the same, it gets very boring, honestly. Okay, so now we're ready to do the fun thing. Oh no, first we need to make our orbs and then we can do our coloring. So this is up to you how you, how you do your orbs. I'm just filling in wherever I want them. Not necessarily every single space. The bigger your orbs, the easier it is to shade them as a sphere. So you might want to have a few big ones and then the rest can be smaller and you don't really have to do much shading on those. And the fewer orbs you have, the more space you have for your colored background. And I just happen to have a blue pen here. And I like that combination of blue and gold and black. I think it's so pretty. I'm kind of limited here since I am traveling. I don't have all of my, obviously, all of my studio things with me. All of my pens and pencils. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. This one could use a little one. All right, now we can get to that fun part of filling in the background, that negative space between the orbs and the actual flux. And um, I can too with the blue. Red would be very pretty too. I do like this 05 pen for filling in because it goes faster than the 01 would. So I have set up here on my host family's kitchen table that I have sat at so many times. And um, it's really fun to be doing something totally different here than eating amazing Austrian food. We might actually make one of the favorite, my favorite Austrian Mehlspeisen, it's called a, um, like a sweet, uh, sweet meal, is um, knödel with apricot, apricots in them. So they're dumplings that are, have apricots inside. So you don't have to sit here and watch me even sped up uh, coloring this in. I think you can handle it. But I did want to say enjoy. Enjoy the coloring. I just, because you don't have to think about anything, it's such a, a relaxing activity in, in my opinion. And maybe be mindful that you saturate that background nicely so that it looks pretty neat. And don't forget to keep a light touch on your pen. The ink will flow better and you won't get a cramp in your fingers or your neck. So I think I got all of the little spaces in between. I might see some on the way. And th these perfs are something you don't have to add if you'd like more blue space behind or you can add more. And as in this case, we have them more like pearls or white dots and you could even use your gel pen to add more or uh, you could put a few of them in gold, which would be a fun accent too. So those are just some ideas. And now we're on to our shading, which is really uh, quite simple because if you've done my tutorial on flux, you'll know how I like to shade that. I'm gonna add a little bit of graphite all along this bottom part of the flux leaf or along this midrib of our built up I can to flux. And then we're gonna get our tortillon and blend that into the light. And I like to go up here a little bit, give it some body instead of just a flat leaf shape. 
And then on this side, I like to put a little bit just on the one side of the vein there and one side here and down along so we can make this spiral pop. Light circular motion. And then here, since we have such a crossover, I'm going to put a little bit under here to indicate a drop shadow. I knew I would miss something. And then this is a little dark, so I'm just going to pick that up and re-blend. So again, we have a little bit of overlap going on here, so I'm going to put some drop shadow. A little bit big. Okay, looking not too bad. And then on this one, on some of the larger spheres, I'm just going to do that little comma shading that I often do, like here. Let's show you this one. Well, this really is a lunchtime tangle, my first Austrian tangle. Uh, you can hear the noon bells ringing. And I'm just going to shade this also again as a pearl. You could use do a gemstone here, whatever. You could do another tangle in there. And now comes the fun part. We get to get out our gold jelly roll pen. I forgot to show you that in the initial uh, tools, but I'll put them in my description as I always do. So this is a, je a jelly roll. If I were at home, I would probably use my beautiful fine tech uh, paints. But since I didn't want to schlep them, I'm just going to go for my jelly roll, which is working really well, especially on the Zendala. It's got such an absorbent um, and forgiving way to take on the jelly roll. Yeah, that's not too bad. I can clean that up even a little more with the black pen. Remember when you're working with Jelly Roll that it's got to be completely dry, which this is not. You can see how it's still wet over here before you do anything else. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be smearing things around. And there we have our first tangle. I am going to go back in. This isn't quite dry. I'm going to go back in and restate some of the blacks around the little circle ring and, or the facet and then around this to give it a, a more of an accent. And don't forget to put your chop sign and date the back. And this is I Can To Plus Rick's Flux. Have fun with it. Thanks for joining me on our lunchtime tangle, my first here in Austria. And I hope to have something good for you next time. See you then. That's it for today's tangle. Thanks for joining me. If you like these lunchtime tutorials, please give them a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I also invite you to check out my website for classes that I have scheduled or to purchase my tangle tags for your favorite step outs. That's bowtangle.net. I'm leaving you with some other links too. Zentangle.com, where you can learn more about the Zentangle method from its founders, Rick Roberts and Maria Thomas. 
You can also visit their store there for a multitude of Zentangle paper tiles, tools, books, and kits. Tanglepatterns.com is that site I talk about where you can explore hundreds of tangle patterns, read about them, and get the step out, which is basically the deconstruction of the pattern. And finally, if you'd like to share your beautiful results with me and my student community, please join Annie's Botangle Alumni Facebook page. We're a private group where we inspire each other with our work and offer tips and useful information about art and Zentangle.